Xterra Performance has your Nissan cover for any off-road adventures. With aftermarket brands like ARB, CVT Tents, Warren, Heps Designs, Insane Fab, White Knuckle Sliders, and so many more. When you're ready to take your truck or SUV to the next level, search www.xterraperformance.com for the best deals around. Remember, that's xterraperformance.com. Hey guys, this is Snickerdoodle. You're listening to Nissan Nation Podcast. Recorded live, coast to coast, it's the Nissan Nation Podcast. From camping, racing, and all points in between. The NNP is your Nissan Nation Podcast. Now start your engines and welcome in the hosts, David and Danny. What is going on, Nissan Nation? Tonight we got a special guest host. You've heard him once before. You love him. You want to be him. Mr. J.R. Carey is with me tonight. What is going on, J.R.? Hey, hey, how's it going, man? How are you doing tonight? Well, uh, you know, it's a spring is here, so things are looking up. Flowers are blooming. Uh, what can we say? It's time to play outside with our cars and trucks. I've already got a list a mile long. Yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to chisel away at it. You know, we'll get it done one thing at a time. Well, I seen you as you are about to tighten swap your vehicle, so that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I'm working on it. Uh, we're trying to order it up piece by piece, and uh, I should have front differential on the way to me in the next few days. And from there, um, things, coilovers, upper control arms, you know, the whole the whole deal, the whole Titan swap deal. The whole the whole big expense of, of swapping your vehicle over. And for those that don't know, listen to this, a Titan swap on an Xterra or Frontier is when you take the actual Titan truck differential, which is supposed to be a stronger uh, differential, <clears throat> and you place it under your, your uh, Frontier and Xterra, and I guess it widens, well, the axles and the control arms and everything widens the vehicle, doesn't it? Yeah, I think overall it's about... Almost six inches. It's about three inches per side that it widens the the track width. Um, it's the upper control arms, the lower control arms. Uh, you replace the tie rod ends or get extensions. Um, then you can do the differential, or you can just do uh, extended axles oh, and okay. keep the current CVs that you have with the current differential that's in it. Or you can do the Titan differential and Titan axles. Right. So there's a couple different configurations options you can have with it. And I think with the, what the Titan, the way it, it goes into the actual diff itself is a little different. It's supposed to be a little stronger at, at that point. Yeah, the Titan differential is stronger. Uh, more spider gears, bigger spider gears. Um, just a uh, more robust housing in general. Oh, well, cool. So It's uh, conveniently the exact same size as the R180 that comes out of the frontier well how convenient is that and uh i'm assuming there's probably mm, probably a little bit of expense with that i mean titans just don't give up their differentials easily <laughs> yeah tracking one down is the hardest part so, uh, so it seems um that and and getting it shipped to your location i tried to uh pick one up at a salvage yard in atlanta on the way back from florida from a business trip i was actually going to take my boss and another guy that works with me in our company rental to a salvage yard in Atlanta to pick up this Titan differential and throw it in the back of the rental. <laughs> um, but our trip got cut short. Uh, I called the place. They weren't going to be able to have it taken out of the Titan in time for me to stop by and pick it up. So I have to get it shipped. Now I'm waiting on it to arrive. Well, that's like Christmas in, uh, what is this? May? No, this is March still. So yeah, <laughs> it's October, man. <laughs> oh man. Too many uh, Miller lights tonight, buddy. Uh, well. <laughs> I guess. And speaking of Miller light, if you would like to sponsor the show, please, uh, contact me. <laughs> we, can, we can get better beer sponsors than that. Man. Hey on. man, if they're good enough for gas monkey, they're good enough for me. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, pull, out my, pull out my Richard there. So what, what do we got going on? Uh, let's see. Poor Danny, poor Danny. Danny boy. Kind of miss him. I do kind of miss him. For those, uh, Dan was unable to join us tonight. I think he's still weeping from the fact that his truck was not able to race in the Mint 400 this, this past few weeks ago. Come down to the last minute and they had uh, a computer go out. Uh, I guess it was a specially tuned computer for their race truck. And they were unable, suckily unable, to get that thing shipped back to him in time and it killed his dream of starting out this season at the mint 400. So we want to give a little moment of silence to poor Dan and the T 
Team Xterra Racing there. Time's up for that. Good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they're, uh, from what Dan has told me, they're expecting to, I guess, do some shakedowns. They've got everything back now and they're supposed to do some shakedowns and they're going to show up for gone moab hopefully and <clears throat> show a few people and sponsors there a good time and race them around the desert and you know i think i know i know they have a race in august they're going to do but i think there was also some smaller races they were going to try to dip their toes into but sad times for dan the amigo he uh We'll we'll do the show without him, and we'll think about him. He's probably crying in his wee little pillow right now. So what else we got going on? Spring, spring has sprung, which means it's time to get out in your garages or whatever flat surfaces or non-flat surfaces you have and start tinkering with your car. As JR said, he's about to do some some Titan swapping on his uh, Frontier, his 2012 Frontier, if I get that right. Oh, you got it right this time. I did, buddy. (laughs) It must be that sign you're holding up saying 2012. Remember, David. (laughs) But hopefully uh, let us know what you're you're tinkering with on our Facebook page. It's at uh, facebook.com slash um, Nissan Nation Podcast. We'd love to hear from you. We also have an email address, nissannationpodcast at gmail.com. Let us know what you uh, think of the show, what you're tinkering on, and uh, we want to start having a few of you garage, what, shade tree mechanics here on the show. Let's talk uh, Nissan with you. I, uh, I've got some sad news, too. I'm, uh, I'm pregnant, JR. I, I, really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We're expecting a... Did you, have you told him yet? I haven't. I haven't told Dan yet, but... But, oh, that's going to be an awkward conversation, <laughs> both of you being married and all. Well, it, it will be, but uh, we're expecting a little 9-pound, 10-ounce uh, Sentra in the driveway anytime soon. Uh, <laughs> I, I thought they were more like 12 or 13 pounds. Oh, I forget. I forget. No, we're uh, <laughs> just my, my poor my poor garage project is, uh, is slowly uh, turning into, um, it's, I don't know what you call it. Uh, don't say it, man. Don't say the dream is dying. No, Lord, no. The dream's not dying, but my wallet is. Um, started uh, ripping apart the axle this past week, and, you know, I'm out of my comfort zone, but I think at some point we all are with when we try new projects. And Well, you can always take it apart. Just putting it back together is the hard part. Well, they say that. <laughs> but I, <laughs> really. I've, got, I've got half an Xterra ripped apart in my shop now, so I'm kind of there. I'm at that live or let die moment. And uh, so if y'all want to donate to help this project, um, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to start 13 different GoFundMe accounts on the show tonight. That's that's right. One for the podcast, one for my personal <laughs> and uh, one for Dan. Mm-hmm. Help me pay for my Titan swap. There you go. There you go. Um, so I'm I'm actually back working on my vehicle, which is uh, is amazing. Well, yeah. For those that, that don't know, I shocking. I started my teardown of of solid axling my vehicle last um, July, and here we are in, towards the end of March. So she's been sitting on two wheels for quite a long time. <laughs> and uh, damn these winters here in Tennessee, damn them. Makes you not want to get outside and work. But yeah, well, they're very demotivating. Yes, very. So ho- hopefully we can have a. I can grab some people for a mod day. And uh, maybe help me rip apart an axle a little bit. A couple, a couple nuts, you know, unlike us. But I got a couple nuts that don't want to budge. I need to cuss I'm, out of them. I'm over. leaving that alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't mess with my nuts. So let's see. We got spring is here. What we got going on in the news? Jr., you got any fancy news sounds this week? Fancy news sounds. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's what see do you want to hear? Let's see if he can pull this one out of his ass. Maybe I can run my printer in the background and it can sound like a press <laughs> going off. Uh, um, you, you want me to give you your boop, 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. All right. So what do we got in the news this week? We've got Nissan is expanding in America. Um, they reported a week ago that the plant here in Smyrna, Tennessee, is actually adding on... Um, I forget it was like a million, million and a half square feet to the plant for training, and they're going to have subcontractors actually on the property now. This is this is big news for the area that I call home. They're looking to add up to I think a thousand more jobs 
right, you know, probably within the next couple of years once it's up and running, which will bring the total to about 10,000 jobs for Middle Tennessee. Um, that's big news. You know, in a time when GM and Ford and everybody else are kind of pulling back and they're they're building, you know, full-size trucks in Mexico and and all their other cars seem to be going where labor is a little bit cheaper. The Nissan and I'll say, you know, Honda and Toyota and everybody else has said, hey, we can build them there cheaper, you know, and build a better quality vehicle. And so, let's see, this plant opened up, I think, in 1984. Four, I want to, no, eighty three is when it opened up. So, man, they've been, they've been in this. What that's over? What let's see? I ain't gonna do math right now, but that's a lot of years. <laughs> Can't think on the fly, 32. guys. Thirty two. Thank you, Jr. But <laughs> so you know, I, I only knew that I had my calculator. <laughs> thank you. Punching it up real quick. Thank you, sir. That's our math department here at the show. I was going to sit here and just listen to you try, though. Hey, man, that's all I can do is try. But anyways, <laughs> that's that's a lot of jobs for the area, and that's not even counting, I think, all the little sub jobs. They also have a plant here in uh, Tennessee that builds all the, the motors, I believe. Um, Canton, Mississippi, they're actually talking about expanding. So good times for Nissan here in America. I can't say, you know, I've got GM in-laws, and uh, they're – they're either proud of the unions there or they're proud of a GM. It, it, I guess it depends on, on which button's being pushed with them. But, you know, they're always talking about, well, you got to buy American. You got to buy American. And my little rant of the show is I cannot see anything more American than buying a product where your vehicle, you know, your vehicle is actually made in this country. Um, I think it's 85% of the parts are actually built in America. They, you know, they do have some things that come from Canada and a lot of the computer stuff I know still comes from Japan, but I'm, I'm proud to say that, you know, that I've worked for that company, built some of the best cars in the world and, you know, they'll going to continue to be built here. They, um, with this, they're laying down roots for a long, long time. Um, I, I, like I said, I hear Canton expanding, and I know the the motor plant's actually expanding along with uh, Mercedes. They're going to actually start building a small diesel there, <clears throat> and uh, Infinity and, and Mercedes is doing a joint venture where they're going to build a small, small SUV. So good times for here in Middle Tennessee. What do you think of all this, Jar? I mean, how, how is how is do you see any effect in uh, the Middle Tennessee area with Nissan expanding? Um, as far as effect, honestly, I have no idea what sort of effect I'm going to see other than there being, you know, a thousand more jobs in the region, which is always a good thing. Um, pushing closure to 10,000 in, in middle Tennessee is a, is a huge thing. Nissan has always been a big company here in town. Um, you know, the headquarters there on 65 as we're driving by, it's, that's been a staple there in the Cool Springs area for quite a, for quite a while. Um, but you know, anytime that jobs are added, um, is a fantastic thing. Uh, but the fact that, like you said, the, the vehicles that we're driving are made right down the street from our house. Um, I love being able to say that, you know, I supported an incredibly small area, a local area economy just by buying my vehicle where I did located right next to the factory, basically. Right. So uh, that's, a, I mean, that's a good feeling. Definitely. I like being able to drive around in that and know that, yeah, maybe it's a Nissan, a Japanese company, but it, it is definitely made in the USA. Not only is it made in the USA, it's made right down the street from my house. So I take pride in that. Right. So it, anytime that they're going to add a thousand jobs, I'm for it. And it, it, the the argument, and in, in I've gotten in, in this with my in-laws a little bit, and the argument of, of where do the profits go trip me out anymore. Because if you look at any of these these car manufacturers anymore, they're global companies anymore. They're not... They're not American yeah. companies, you know. You know, GM they took a hit with the the recession and and about went under, and it wasn't just America that bailed them out. You know, Canada I knew threw some money in there, and some of the European companies you know threw money in there to save them. <clears throat> and uh, in the end, you know, it all comes where their stocks are traded, and they're traded all over the world. So guess where those dividends go to wherever you know around the world people are buying those. So it always trips me out when when people really ref, you know refer to American make cars or, or American branded cars. Um, it's a world economy and I'm happy to support my little, my little section of the world with the cars I buy. So what else have we got in the news? The IDX, man, this is, 
this is either good or bad for people. I, some people love it. Some people hate it. The IDX, which was kind of a uh, hidden for 510, I think what they were toying with the old the old dots and 510s, which were, I guess, imported in mid 70s. Little rocket ships of a car, little two door coupes, rear wheel drive. They were fast, fun, and super super affordable. Well, they a few years ago, I think it was 2013, they brought the car, a kind of modern version of it, to the, I believe it was Detroit Auto Show. Or no, it may have been the, the Japan Japanese Auto Show, I'm, I'm not sure. Anyways, I digress. They um, really had teased people with, uh, with um, hey, we're building this, this new rear-wheel drive car. It's going to be a car helped design by... by the youth so they had a bunch of people you know on their website chiming in hey what do you want in a car and they really they shaped a car to what what people had asked for and it it was a small you know potentially a little four cylinder rear wheel drive car that would probably you know start around 22,000 or so and I'm sure jump up to 30,000 but it was actually you know going to be affordable for people to buy for your younger people it was going to be stylish um they had some exciting colors they had a nismo version of it that looked super super racy well reports have come out the past few weeks that no more no more the two gentlemen that that spearheaded the project and i do not have their name in front of me but i guess have moved on to greener pastures one's moved to cadillac and i'm not sure where the other guys went but you know, as projects go within big companies like this, that was their their little baby, and it's not going to be somebody else else's project within Nissan. So as of right now, all the talk from from hey, we're building this, we're building this, we're just looking for a platform to put it on has went to nothing, zero. We're not talking. Uh, when pushed when pushed about it here recently, you know, they completely dodged the question, which is 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 really sad because I love rear wheel drive cars. Um, my G35 is a rear wheel drive and it's so much fun to drive. And, um, I could only imagine this thing being five to 600 pounds lighter with a little turbo, uh, 1.8, <clears throat> uh, liter engine that this thing would be, you know, the weight that the weight, to, to power ratio was going to be pretty sweet. And I had dreams of wanting to test drive one of these things, but it looks like no, no more. So that's really sad though, because I was. This is one of the vehicles that I was really looking forward to coming out because um, here in probably another two years or so, I'll be in the market for something small, affordable, gets relatively decent gas mileage. Of course, anything compared to my Frontier is <laughs> going to be really good. Um, sure, but like um, you know, fun to drive is something that I'm really going for. Rear wheel drive is falls right into that category. I was thinking about you know maybe. Something like this, or even an older, um, you know, BMW E30, like an 89, 320i, mm. something like that. Right. Um, something small, fun, affordable, gets good gas mileage. And I had my eye on this, I'm not going to lie. So to see that it's it's gone, it's not, you know, it hasn't found its platform. They don't know what they're going to do with it and basically are just kind of mum now. And it's uh, it's, uh, it's it's disappointing. I was yeah. looking forward to it. That's for sure. At well, least to see what it's you know something comparable with like the uh, the Scion, um, the BRZ, and the FRS. Right, and that was the target for this car, definitely. Uh, and if you know if if Scion and Subaru can put these out to some level of success, I honestly I don't see why Nissan can't. I think I think the biggest problem for this was a platform to build this on. I mean, you know, we're just talking about how it's a global market anymore. To keep costs down on these, I guess you've got to have you know something to share the platform with to help share the engineering costs and all the the safety trials they have to do. They just don't have it right now with the the Z in flux for a redesign. That's kind of the small version that that Nissan was. Um, they're looking to take the Z down to a smaller car with this next gen, anyways. So I think that would probably cut into this. Uh, obviously, Sentra and everything else is. You know, they're all front wheel drives, and I, I don't ever see that platform working. So it, it's been the deal breaker, I guess, for this vehicle. Um, do you see like rear wheel drives kind of making a comeback? I know, I mean, I've I know here in the past couple of years, you know, like with, with the Toyota and, and Subaru thing and a couple other cars, that there seems to be the interest there in the buying public. What do you think, Jarrah? 
I think there's definitely an interest there. Um, if it actually makes a, a comeback is another question, I think, altogether. I think uh, a lot of the people that are buying up vehicles are looking for, uh, you know, maybe more like all-wheel drive as opposed to a sporty rear-wheel drive car. You're like, yes, there will always be that market, but it's not going to be, um, you know, like your crossovers, and your your smaller SUVs, things like that, that people are, you know, buying up today. Sure, it's, sure. I, I really, I mean, the all, all-wheel all drive is real, you know, it's definitely appealing. Um, but, you know, you look at, like, the GTR, it's all-wheel drive right now. They, uh... I'm seeing a lot of a lot of the guys in the, in the racing of those right now. They're they're, I don't know how they're doing it, and I'm not going to try to get technical with it. But they're they're disengaging the front wheel and just really making it a rear wheel drive car for a lot of the track racing they're doing. Probably a lot of drift stuff, I imagine too. But, um, I don't ever see a time when rear wheel is going to completely disappear. I mean, we had the the late '80s, early '90s of you know when I think probably with Chevrolet, it was just pretty much the Corvette was their only rear wheel platform for a long time, but. Um, you know, like Chevy has that new SS they're building. I believe that is all re- uh, rear wheel drive, um, with a big V8 in it. So I, I mean, I cannot, the, the G35 I have right now, it's so much fun. And, and I, and I, I hate to, to harp on it just because it is a rear wheel drive, but the next sad thing for a lot of these platforms is, is it's going to all paddle shifting. And I love mine being a manual, being able to just shift and just, you know, the feel of the car. And <clears throat> I noticed today that that the new Q60, which replaced the the G35, they're talking about the the next gen of it. It's going to be 400 horsepower at minimum, and then they're offering going to offer two different motor versions for this car. And the next one is 450. I think it's going to be a hybrid of some type. That uh, they're taking the manual out of it too. So I know we're rambling here, and, and I'll try to get this back to the the IDX, but. They they really really need a platform for this car. I think there's a market for it. When they release this pictures of this, and and they've even had like guys like Jay Leno and them test drive this whatever. I think it's sitting on an old Sylvia platform or however you say it. <clears throat> the old two uh, two forty SX platform is what they're testing this on. And so they they had all this interest for this car. Give us something, Nissan. You I mean you're you're awesome about your concepts now of bringing them out and you don't really change much about them, you know, a little safety here and there, but give us this car. It's been a couple years. You, you, it was in every car magazine around both these cars were, we're excited. Please build this car. Um, I'm guessing, you know, something like this, especially in a manual, I bet 30 miles a gallon is not out of reach for a little car like that. Yeah. I would expect it to easily get, you know, upper twenties, if not lower thirties. Right. Something like that, you know, depending on the engine, um, turbo or not. But, yeah, I could see that as a definite possibility. Well, you know, I a report, and I mentioned this last podcast, but a report had come out where, where Nissan is, they're really trying to get away from their V6s in the cars at all. So <clears throat> so the, the gas-hungry V6 wasn't going to be there for this car. And I think it would probably be just too much of a big engine for this car. But I know they've got a small, small uh, turbo four-cylinder that's been developed have this will be off a little bit off tangent. Have you ever seen the pictures of a couple of years ago where they built the four cylinder engine complete and the guy's holding it in his hand? How light it is? I have not, dude. It's it's a trip that ha- they're really progressing with lightweight blocks and but something like that it would seem to go hand in hand with this. Keep the car real light. Anyways, I will get off this. I I know I've <laughs> rambled for ten minutes. I love the car. I think most of our listeners uh, that I've talked to love the car. Obviously, JR over there seems to love the car. Give it to us, Nissan. Give it to us. Please. So, and I'll end up the news with this. Last last episode, we had talked about the free flow concept. It looks like reports are this week that they're actually going to build this car. And there's talk of it actually coming to the U.S. And we've posted uh, pictures on the website at uh, nissannationpodcast.com of the the concept from the Geneva Auto Show. <clears throat> it's a little five five door hatchback, you know. I think Versa is is the, especially the Versa Versa hatchback is on its way out. So this would this would be a great replacement to this car. It's it's super exciting. It it's anything is more exciting than the Versa. The Versa is very conservative looking, but reports are that they are um 
they're going to build this car. The only issue right now for it is they want they want the numbers to be about fifty thousand a year. Um, I I I know the little Versa itself is hitting those numbers easily. The little four door they're doing, but the the U.S. market is weird with with their little hatchbacks. Uh, it seems like Honda, from best I can tell, had always dominated that little segment. What they had, like I think the Fit, it's called now. Um, <clears throat> and Nissan's always always kind of tinkered with it, but never really got got deep into it. And I think with this free flow, whatever they end up calling it, is going to be a breakout hit for Nissan. It's going to give them something that competes, you know, with the mileage with Sentra and all those. But yet, it's going to be aggressive looking with their their typical boomerang uh, tail lights and and the V shaped grille. It's it's very interesting car. So please go to our website and, and check it out. And I'll go ahead and post some pictures on our Facebook page as well. If you have not, if you ha- where are we talking about? Everybody has Facebook nowadays. If you've not liked our page, page please do so. Um, Dan and I, and uh, maybe we can get JR over there to actually contribute something sometime. Maybe. Besides his stunning good looks. <laughs> it's really all you need, though. I well, mean... Am I right? <laughs> that sells it. That sells it right there, doesn't it? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> like our page on Facebook, and please, if you're on iTunes, give us a review on iTunes. iTunes, once again, they the way they they keep you up into the their ratings is based on reviews, and and we need them. Um, I think right now the only thing I can really tell is our direct competition is the Adam Carolla Carcast Show. And uh, Adam is a big fan of, of Nissan, but he's still all over the map with with um, his rants. I don't know if anybody's listened to the show, but he's a ranter. But he, he's he's talks cars, trucks. He's real big into to the legend racing or, or throwback car racing. And I know he's got a couple of Paul Newman cars, <clears throat> which are uh, 300Zs. Anyways. Anyways. Uh, nobody cool. likes a ranter day. Hey, dude, I can do it, especially without Dan here, man. You're you're being real quiet with me to let me go, and and Daniel just Danny <laughs> hey, kicks in. You're the man of the hour. I'm Ooh, just I'm the along tower for the of ride. power. I'll devour. Anyways, I uh, give us a, a review on on um, iTunes. We'd appreciate it, and we are now on Stitcher. Stitcher is um, for those that that aren't Apple friendly. You know, you can download the podcast through there. I think it'll work with Android, whatever your, uh, maybe your Windows phone. The four people in America that probably have Windows phones, you can download our show there. Or you can listen to it on our website. Once again, it's uh, NissanNationPodcast.com. And it's always the current episode, but you should be able to link into that and get the, the previous episode. Insane Fab offers a variety of off-road products for any type of enthusiast. With 15 years of fabrication in the world of NASCAR, Insane Fab products can hold up to your adventure. From roof racks, rock sliders, front and rear bumpers, to any custom work, Insane Fab is up for the challenge. When you don't have 10 months to wait for your off-road armor, search www.insanefab.com. Once again, that's insanefab.com. All right, tonight we got a we got a pretty cool guest with us, Miss Daniel Trout. How you doing tonight, Danny? I'm doing fantastic. How about yourself there? Hey, you know, we're in the land of milk and honey here at Nissan, so we're doing great. Nice. So, um, give us a little bit of your background. How how did you get into kind of off-roading in the Nissan brand? Um, well, actually it came because of my uh my best friend Crash, uh Dan White. Um, I had a Jeep Liberty before, which really doesn't count oh, for much. Oh, no. Um, but Crash bought his Xterra and wanted to go camping. So he, of course, wanted somebody to go with him that he knew. Sure. Um, ended up at the Kicks Run, which is no longer active anymore. It was part of the Nextera group. Um, ended up going out with him and basically fell in love with the Xterra and it just took off from there cool Have, i mean did you know anything about the vehicle before or was this just kind of an introduction to it and was like holy shit that's a cool truck i knew that they were yellow and that's not all <laughs> well there there weren't it wasn't your trademark pink so no nope well so so basically just just showing up to the event had you ever 
played in the woods like that before or, or um not very often um i mean in south jersey we do have the pine barrens and a lot of woods around so i mean everybody's got woods in their backyard right but it was just never something i would even think of how about how about like off-roading where i mean did you ever take your your little jeep out and and beat on it a little bit or i mean was it just kind of like fake off-roading a little bit for you fake um i actually took the jeep out into the pine barrens uh Jim, uh, Suckerfish, actually made a trip to Jersey, made the eight-hour trip from Ohio, and did a camping overnight, went in the woods, uh, sunk the Jeep, had to be pulled <laughs> out. Uh, Sweet. Yeah, tore the carpets out of that, but just basic. I mean, the thing was bone stock. Uh, ended up actually yeah. really uh, screwing up the rear diff on that one, but thankfully gave it back to the ex-boyfriend and said, here you go. Oh, that's nice. All, that, that's always nice. Listen, <laughs> listen, man, listen. <laughs> yeah, that sounds a lot better than the story I have when I sunk my truck. I, there was nobody to give it back to. <laughs> so, uh, so I know a little bit of your background just from knowing you for several years on the forums. But let's tell the story. There's a group called GPAX. What does GPAX stand for? Um, it used to be Greater Philadelphia Area Exterrors, mm-hmm. and it's now Greater Pennsylvania Area Exterrors. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a group of guys who are all about the trucks and want to do stuff for the community. Um, they were doing food days for, uh, one of the local radio stations or food drives. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, basically a group of guys that want to go out and make sure that everybody's being smart about what they're doing and enjoying themselves. Yeah. That's, that's something I've noticed with, um, the, the Xterra crowd is they, they really like their clubs seem to want to really give back and, and it's strange. It's very strange to me why, why they do it. And I'm always happy to do it when our local club uh, wants to do it. But you don't really see that a ton with the Jeep clubs. You know, you'll see them kind of in the Christmas run, stuff like that, Toys for Tots stuff. But but I've noticed researching the Jeep packs, man, they, they seem to do a few things a year where they give back. Yeah, they try to do the best they can. Well, you know, you're in the land of liberty. You got <laughs> to gotta give back. So, so the story goes that I guess – the boyfriend with with the boyfriend's vehicle you needed another vehicle after you uh, demolished that jeep right uh yeah basically um and that was shortly after the uh the kicks run so i already knew what type of vehicle i wanted mm-hmm. so that was pretty nice um yeah i started saving got the income tax check you know wasn't working a whole lot so just saving every penny as you know that i could right um ended up helping out one of the other members of the group um, which I'm sure everybody knows who he is, uh, Xterra Mike. Oh yeah. Helped him yeah. out with some, uh, with some issues and stuff like that. And, uh, we ended up getting him, you know, a bunch of funds together. We got him new tires and all of a sudden, you know, in, in Jersey, we do taco Tuesday. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody meets up, we go to Don Pablo's, have some tacos, some drinks. Well, this <laughs> wait, time. They- wait, wait, y'all, y'all drink in Jersey? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, <laughs> I'm drinking right now. Well, there you go. <laughs> Sweet. So we do it on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. 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 I forget. Um, Show three. Yeah. I think Dan was drunk by the way. So <laughs> <laughs> never happened. I don't know what you're talking about. Exactly. Go <laughs> ahead. I'm sorry. not remember. It never happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, a bunch of, you know, more than the usual group ended up at this one taco Tuesday and, uh, here to find out they all kind of took up a collection for me because they saw my interest and I guess helping them out. Um, and they gave me, I believe it was just shy of like eight or $900 towards a down payment on my truck. That is awesome. That's very awesome. Yeah. I'm not a crier, but they, they got me right, right on the verge. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, still that's, you know, for, I don't, I'm not, how many guys do you think pitched in on that? Um, I want to say it was, Probably around 10, 11 guys. That's quite a bit of money to, to pitch in. And, and probably some of them really didn't know you, but it's it's just awesome that, that people are just willing to throw in, you know, a $20 bill or something to help people out. Yeah, I actually yeah, think cool. they even, um, I think they messaged people like via Facebook, uh, who I was friends with. I think there were people who donated that weren't even actually in packs. I think they just reached out and really people cool. responded. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. That's a really cool idea. I like that. Yeah, that's really awesome. So... Um, how long did it take you once you saved up this money to, to go find your, for those that don't um, know, she has a, a, a pretty little black Xterra. Um, <laughs> so how, what, what year is your truck? 
Mine's an O2. Okay. So how long did it take you to, to spend that money? Um, I got the money. I believe it was a Wednesday, which would be the day after Taco Tuesday. Obviously. Um, <laughs> went and basically, we already knew the truck I was going to get. Um, I was looking around and we found one locally. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we uh, basically went up and said... Was the timing belt done? No. Was the water pump replaced? No. I said, all right, well, you're going to knock, you know, 1500 bucks off of it. Sure. And, well, thankfully, the, the dealership, they saw that uh, I was getting dropped off by Hoagie, Sean Valentine. Uh-huh. So, obviously, his truck is a monster, uh, at least for our standards in Jersey. And, uh, yeah, he basically knew that I knew what I was talking about, and I got a decent price for it, and then I believe it was... That Friday was the shocker run, and I was in the woods. Right, that's awesome. awesome. It's always yeah. awesome, and you know that's that's kind of awesome. You know, you see these people on these forums and stuff, and they'll go and spend five thousand dollars instantly on a stock vehicle, and they've never taken it anywhere. And at least you had an idea of what you were doing to it. Well, you know, once you you took it out when it was completely stock, and you had a you know a good feel for what you wanted to do with it after that. Oh yeah, temp tag and everything. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That is awesome. We'll we'll see here, and, and we'll get to this, but but here at our local place called Woolies, the local uh, Range Rover cl uh, group, they'll off the dealership floor, man. They'll take them right out there and blow windows out the sides of these things with dealer tags on them. It's it's the silliest thing ever, but hey, more 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 power to you. Um, so so you picked it up, and what about what time was this? When, oh god that had to been four years ago wow wow and i'm assuming you still have the vehicle i do i do i own it now no more payments awesome nice. awesome that's a great feeling I, yeah I, it was pretty funny um because we found it at a buy here pay here place because mm -hmm. i wanted a first gen and i wanted a black a white or a silver right. anything that would go with pink <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> found the pink one or i found the black one and um yeah just it just took off from there. Well, cool. Um, so you, uh, you, I'm assuming you attend there. You were saying they have, what, a couple runs a year that you do attend? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't make it to the Shocker run this year, but um, there's always ECXC, um, which is usually July 15th weekend, wherever that falls in. Mm -hmm. um, and Real then quick, we... what... Just for, just for the people that that aren't that aren't extra savvy, ECXC is East Coast Extra Challenge, correct? Correct. And right. um, the ongoing thing is it's Xterra only. Um, no other Nissan vehicles, no other Jeeps, Chevys, Fords, nothing. It's just strictly gotcha. Nissan Xterra. That's cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, the Shocker Run just passed. We have ECXE, the East Coast Xterra Challenge. Um, we have a couple other ones during the fall, and I can't think of them the right back now. To, the back to school thing—do you do that one? Oh, uh, the back to school is in April. Um, or no, that's April, September. April Fools is in April. Right. Um, that's up north. Uh, I want to say New York. Um, it's winch necessary, so I don't have a winch. I haven't made it yet. Um, well, there's we, the back to school run. You gotta get I your. Made out to one of them. You've got to get your boyfriend in line then. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I keep getting puppies. All I want is a bumper and a winch. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe he'll make that happen for you one day. Oh, hopefully. So, so, so the listeners know I I met Miss Danny. Um, I guess it was 2011. You couldn't have had the vehicle very long at all, really. Nope. Just and a couple uh, months. and and we had put together the the National Xterra meet, and I think there was what ten or so from your area that drove down here that time. Uh, there was about 10 from our area, but when we ended up meeting up with other groups from across the country, I think at one point our convoy had to be close to 20, 25 vehicles. Wow. Wow. It that was cool. ridiculous. And of course, we all got lost because not a single guy wanted to stop and ask for directions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was there any other women drivers in your group? or? Um, I do don't believe so. Oh, actually, um, Kelly from Chicago, Blackhawk. Yeah, she yeah. She made it out. And then we had uh, another girl, Tanya, Tanya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From yeah, May, yeah. She May, couldn't. May. Um, she couldn't drive the truck, but she ended up catching a ride with the Jersey crew and made it out there. All right. So, That's so cool. at least there was a there was a couple women to to find directions on how to get to Middle Tennessee, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> have to get have to give the the guys there a hard time. So. 
so that's kind of that's kind of how I, I got to know you a little bit. And of course, you know, we've dealt on forums and stuff. And uh, tell us a little bit about. I know your involvement with what is it, Off Road Vixens? Yes, Off Road Vixens. It is a women's clothing company, and they're all about having women that you know go off the beaten path, like to get dirty, work on their vehicles, and do things that the boys usually think we can't do. It's uh, two women out of, I believe it's Washington State that started it. Um, and so far, they're they're making it happen. I mean, they sponsor tons of women and girls. I've seen some of the pictures of some of the girls that are, I mean, just above toddler age, six, seven years old, out there on quads and dirt bikes. That's it's awesome. it's pretty awesome. That is That's so- super cool. And just to let you know, I bought my daughter's Vixen shirts at the Mint 400 this weekend and brought them home. It says something along the lines of uh, girls get dirty too or something like that, off-road yep. vixens. And oh, yeah. they wear them all the time. They love them. Oh, yeah. I think my coworkers are tired of seeing my, uh, my off-road vixen hoodies. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hey, man, you got to let people know what you represent. So what, what kind of – what do you like to do with wheeling? I mean, what what – Obviously, you've you've been doing it for several years now. What what's kind of what's what's your passion about it? I like challenging myself and doing things that the boys say I can't do. Really, like yeah. what what would they what on a typical day out with you? What would they say? Oh, I don't think she can do that. Um, just hitting certain trails or taking certain lines. Um, obviously, I've almost flipped my truck twice. Right. Um, I've had it up on two wheels at two different occasions, which was quite interesting. Hearing, you know, oh, she's not going to make it and she's going to flip the truck. Um, but, yeah, it's it's getting out there. And it's for me, it gives a little bit of a high. You know, by the end of the day, my legs are shaky from picking lines. <laughs> it's pretty neat. I, I definitely enjoy it. Right, right. So what what because I know nothing of Rosh Creek. What What is one of your favorite trails out there? Oh, the washout. What, do, um, what does that consist of? It's basically this one spot where the trail is all washed out and it's a big rut and it's a lot of off camber. Um, it's a very heavy on the brake and no gas. It's just breaking it through. Right. Um, I love going down it. Mm-hmm. I was finally able to tackle it going up it mm-hmm. um, with the new, uh, what is it? The mud grapplers that I have on my truck. Right. ECXC last year. I was like, I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm go- so I ended up going down in it had to turn around and had to go back up it and yeah it's awesome is there is there is there a something like that that you've done and that other guys have just kind of backed out on oh yeah there's there's a bypass um there's this one picture of uh my truck somebody got from behind where um my truck is getting ready to go up well at least attempt it at that point to go up the washout and uh all you see is like the bypass arrow on the tree mm-hmm. and like a line of guys with their trucks as I'm going <laughs> wash out. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm sure that feels good. To and, see those no, pictures. <laughs> this, this, yeah, definitely. this sounds horrible and, and it's not meant to be that way, but, but as a woman, does that give you like a, like, Hey, F you, <laughs> I did this and, oh, you, and yeah. you guys are big oh, pussies yeah. and won't do it. Oh yeah. Especially when I see somebody that's got a vehicle that's, just as capable of mine or more and they're like no i'm not doing it i'm like if i'm doing it you're doing it come on now you're not gonna let a girl show you up and yet they do so i mean that's it's it's awesome that i i don't think i know i didn't get to wheel with you when you were at woolies that time at the event but it's it's awesome i i do follow y'all stuff when you um post up pictures and I'm always, you know, like everybody's adventure, always excited to see and compare like your challenges versus what everybody else does. And yeah, the one picture, where were y'all at? Is it some new place in Pennsylvania where you were on two wheels there? Somebody, it looked like they might've give you a bad line, but you still gripped in and went. Oh yeah. It was, um, Xanthiserite or Anthracite adventure area park or something like that. It's a new, a new park and it's not just an off-road place. It's, um, they do horseback riding and hiking and they're, I don't know if it's open yet, but I know they're planning on having this giant area for all sorts of outdoor adventuring. Right. And, um, yeah, I was like, Oh, you know, there's a little washout. I'm going to go down in there. And I'm like, oh, that, that, that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and t- all I remember is the guide that we had, um, you know, typical Jeep guy, older gentleman, really nice. Um, 
basically he was like, ah, never had that happen before. And my response was, well, actually I have. <laughs> um, and yeah, I couldn't pull all the way through or else I definitely would have rolled the truck. Ended up uh, backing that one out. Well, well, so you didn't ride that one out, huh? No, unfortunately not. I wouldn't have the truck if I did. Well, so, maybe I'd have a newer one. Sometimes it's best to just back that thing up. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so back it up. Out on the floor. <laughs> Um, so I've, I've read some things on the forums where you do some cleanups in, in your local area. What, can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Uh, yeah, there's, um, the Pine Barrens. It is acres on top of acres of just protected wildlife. And, um, they're trying to do their best. There's a local Jeep club and I can't think for the life of me of the name of it. Um, but every year they do a Pine Barren cleanup. There's this one uh, restaurant bar called the Piccadilly Inn, and they offer free wings for anybody that participates in the cleanup. Um, of course, there's drinks. They have all these sponsors that throw in for giveaways from anything from a keychain to a bumper. I think I saw a refrigerator given away one year. Um, but they just want to go out with so many environmentalists saying, you guys are tearing up the land. You never do good. You only do bad. They like to get out there and show, like, we also do good. We right. like to tread lightly. We like to clean up things that other people, you know, discarded. So y'all, y'all do on a on a, I hate to say typical time, but but I mean I've seen pictures where you guys just bring out a bunch of bunch of trash where just people, I guess probably night wheelers and stuff, just go in and just trash the place and. Oh yeah, we've seen things from cars just left back there. Um, there was a jet ski. <laughs> wow. Sweet. I mean, I know it's close to the beach, but we're I, it's a good 30, 45 minute drive. So like, <laughs> all right, I'm just going to get rid of my jet ski in the woods. It's like, come on, dispose of stuff properly. Well, we do that. We do tractors like that in Tennessee. We just throw tractors everywhere. So <laughs> y'all are a little more, more uppity, I guess, with your, your jet skis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're fancy here in Jersey. <laughs> so when do y'all, when does, when does those cleanups usually happen? The cleanup is usually September, October. It's mm -hmm. just about when it's starting to get a little chilly out. Um, mm -hmm. Last year they held it. Uh, it was actually not necessarily in the Pine Barrens. It was actually at a cranberry bog because mm -hmm. Jersey's known for, you know, cranberries, ocean sprays here. And um, so, yeah, there was a lot of people just dumping around these cranberry bogs. So we weren't driving through the woods. We're literally driving on paths between all the bogs and going to different locations and cleaning up stuff there. Awesome. Dan, nice. you got any questions? Um, uh -oh. what, uh, <laughs> what do you do in a cranberry bog per se? Is that, is that the one where you... <laughs> haven't you ever seen the ocean have... spray commercials? Is that what a cranberry bog is? We don't have that kind of stuff out here. We, I mean, we, don't, we barely got trees. Yeah. No, but um, that, is that where they, they like, how, I got a million questions about cranberry bogs. <laughs> I don't know much about them myself, uh, but from what I gather, like maybe the cranberries grow low and then they fill them up to harvest them because they float in water. Mm -hmm. And yes, mm. I say water, not water. I'm sorry. That I was I was a little confused there. I didn't know if that was like a new if that was like a proprietary ocean spray product. Like, uh. that we we sink all of our cranberries in winter, and that's how they get their special flavor. Well, I was having fun listening her just say Xterra. So Xterra. Yeah. <laughs> Is that not how it's said? <laughs> oh, we're just giving you shit, girl. Don't don't mind us. We're we're two idiots here. Um. So what what kind of obviously you you've been hinting around with the bumper and winch and stuff. What what are kind of your goals for your vehicle? Um, eventually solid axle, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so it'll be a complete I, toy one day, huh? Oh yeah. Complete weekend toy. Um, so of course, solid axle, bigger tires. Um, I'd really like to get the suspension up to where, you know, I'm not throwing out ball joints every seven, eight months along with the U joints. Right. And, uh, then eventually from the back of the front seats to the rear of the truck, cutting the top off, mm -hmm. caging it, and putting on a snap-on soft top. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. It's always mm -hmm. scary it's scary when a, a woman starts talking about cutting things off, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so Dangerous. <laughs> danger. Tubes. Danger. <laughs> Tubes and weldings. <laughs> so, 
So I mean, all the women. I, I think, I think, I think I would, I would absolutely believe that you would do that. So it's nice to hear that you have awesome plans for the truck, and it's not just like something that you have for now, but it's more of like, because I mean, I when, when I when I have like, you know, my old truck, I, it's not just like a truck to me anymore. It's got personality. You know, I know little things about it that that are broken or stupid, and that's the best part about some old vehicles that you've had for a long time. Like you know, everything's got a little stupid story that you. Oh, why is this handle didn't bro- why why is this handle broken? Oh, you know, Johnny got a little drunk on third, yeah. you know, two years ago and <laughs> tried to bite it or something like that. Oh but, yeah, uh, like, but why is there know, a dent by your back window with a bandaid? Yeah. <laughs> I think you've blown out a came out of nowhere. <laughs> I, and I think yeah. you've what blown out a couple rear windows, haven't you? Uh yeah, the first time I got my skid plates and went to go power wash them before painting them pink. Awesome. I had a, you know, quarter mile dirt driveway and just before I turned in a driveway, I'm like, wow, my sticker's coming off the window. No, the skid plate went through the rear window. <laughs> yeah. And then dope. Ended, yeah, dope. And then ended up replacing the same window um, due to ECXC last year. It's coming down a trail, and, you know, Curtis thought I was doing good with spotting and everything. And all of a sudden, front driver side dipped. Back driver side went up and smacked right into a tree, and all oh. ears. <laughs> Time for some plastic. Oh uh, yeah. Plastic. Well, so any other any other uh, things you want to kind of? You seem like a, a a lady that is all over the map as far as what you do with your vehicle. Yeah, uh, obviously it's. I mean, it's got monster liner pink on uh, the hood. The rock sliders are. Uh, our monster line pink. I have pink and black camo headliner. Um, so, so you've, you've, you've kept it a little girly, huh? Yeah. I don't want my boyfriend driving it. <laughs> he probably doesn't want to. <laughs> do it. He definitely do doesn't. It. He ended up being, uh, we moved and he ended up being the first vehicle in a construction zone driving my truck. Oh no. And I've seen some <laughs> of the stickers you have on there. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah, one of the Ohio guys ended up sticking a magnet on there about the hunk if you want to see my uh, my girls, and the <laughs> magnet faded away, so eventually I was like, well, it's been on there for so long, everybody knows about it, so the decal was made, and now the decal is on the fender. Oh. Nice. It's even better than just the regular story. There's more <laughs> stories to the, to the sticker than it is. It oh, would... yeah, there's a, a lot of beeps and honks that happen, and then guys getting angry. <laughs> Or wife's hitting their husbands because they're reaching over to beep the horn. <laughs> That's awesome. Traffic is always I have a similar sticker and nobody beeps. I don't quite understand. <laughs> it says, honk if you want to see my junk. And, no, and, and I, I keep cutting people off and they honk at me. And I, but then they just let me off later. <laughs> and I think, it, I think that only works for chicks. I yeah. think that, I now, think maybe that was... if I had that on mine, and then when they pulled, <laughs> saw me, they'd be really laughing like she is right. junk. Maybe you should maybe you should put that on the back other corner. <laughs> that, yeah, that's the other junk. corner. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so you make sure you make sure when the husband sees the one side, then you go around him and make sure the wife sees the other side. There, there you go. go. I'll just make sure the boyfriend's in the passenger seat. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've we've definitely glad to have you on the show, and uh, we definitely want to especially around one of these event times, we want to have you back and kind of, kind of, you know, let you pump the event. You're always awesome to talk to on the the forums and, and we really appreciate you doing this with us. All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate you guys having me. It was a good time. All right. Yeah. We appreciate you repping, repping the ladies and uh, keep up the good work. And uh, we'll definitely be uh, meeting you and I someday, not over the internets. (laughs) Maybe it's SEMA one year. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> all right well thanks again guys i appreciate it all right thanks uh, i own a company called xterra performance um we specialize in selling off-road nissan stuff um and i started started driving a nissan xterra and shoot now about all right years. that was miss uh miss danny we uh appreciate her being on and uh for those let's see off-road vixens i know she really pushes that and uh it's some killer ladies clothing and they push outdoors sports for ladies so um give those guys let's see it's www.offroadvixens.com and uh if you email them tell them miss uh miss snickerdoodle sent you over there um what is on next time next time club nico 
we got the owner of Club Nico going to pop on the show. Um, hopefully, we're gonna we're gonna dig in and and find out how he got into that and how it's became the biggest auto form for Nissan in the world. And I think it only rivals uh, the Volkswagen Forum as for size and uh, use for for cars. So that should be interesting. The guy's building a killer killer shop. JR, I think we we've seen the pictures. Yeah, the pictures that he has uh, the shop out there. I think he's in Arizona. It's just yeah. amazing. Yeah, he uh, his garage is incredible. It's like a ra- it's like a NASCAR race shop, man. So, it is. and and the guy seems to he seems to build a couple cars every couple of years, and then just you know drives them a little bit and sends them on their way. So we'll see what Mister Greg is up to, and uh, always we're gonna have some news that you can use. Um, and of course, my ramblings, and I think maybe next show, Mister Dan Amigo will be back. My uh, my buddy, my compadre, and a uh, partner think, in crime. <laughs> partner in crime, of course. Your better half. Well, he is the better looking half, that's for sure. And maybe my dogs can can bark in the background next show too. What are y'all doing, dogs? You have to talk to their agent. Well, the Chihuahua's the agent, and uh, the big guy he won't talk unless the Chihuahua says so. So, <laughs> so. Hey Brooks, has this been a good show for you? Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. Okay. The, it's dog approved. As you can hear, he's tearing the house apart. This has been a dog approved show, and this is the Nissan Nation podcast. And we are out. See ya. Peace. Wait, my mic smells like poop. <laughs> All right, all right, here we go. All right, guys. Let's shit. Where am I at? <laughs>